Hello, hello, YouTube family. So today I'm going to be showing y'all how to do a basic oil change and just kind of give you the ins and outs of how to do an oil change on your own vehicle, whether that be a Buick, a Chevy, a Ford, whatever it may be, just kind of like the general idea of how to find certain things on your car to be able to do an oil change by yourself at home. So let's get right into it. Also in this video, I'm going to be showing my little sister how to do the oil change. So she'll be assisting me and then I can basically give her the knowledge of what I've learned over the years to now transfer it to her and then hopefully she'll show her friends and such and so on and so on. So all of us girls can do our own maintenance on our vehicles. So I actually have my mom's Buick Enclave in here right now. It's a 2015. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a flat level surface to be able to work on. You don't want to be working on hills and stuff like that because I will be using a jack to jack it up. So that's why I'm using a flat surface. If you have to do it on like an unlevel driveway, make sure that you're at least um, going uphill instead of downhill so that all the oil can drain out of your oil pan. Whether that uh, instead of having it go forward where all your oil is still in the front of the pan. So, first step, level surface. Second step, in your driver's seat, or your driver's side, you gotta pop the hood. So on your driver's side of your vehicle, you're gonna find a little latch that has this little icon on it with the hood. You're just gonna pop that, and then you heard it Scary. pop open the front. So you're gonna come over here. And then look inside this little tiny crack to see where your lever is. Can you grab the light please? Mm -hmm. And shine it right in here so I can show them kind of like where it is. Okay, so hold that, yeah, like right there. And then there's a little lever right inside here. I don't know if I can show it on the camera or not. So there's a little lever. You kind of have to like feel for it a little bit right inside of here. So let me see if I can show you with this hand right here so if you can see this little lever that i'm moving with my finger you just kind of move that over so that you can pick it up and then i can show you the lever now that it's open so i just felt my hand in here to move this over so that this part will slide over and unlatch the hood latch so now your hood is open okay so second thing is your type of oil will typically almost always be on your oil cap. So the next thing you're gonna look for is this little sign. It kinda looks like a little genie lamp with a little drop. Wouldn't you say that looks yeah, like a genie lamp? Yeah, it looks a lot like a genie lamp. <laughs> so it looks like a little lamp with a little like teardrop kind of thing. And the SAE 5W30 is the type of oil that you will be using to put back into here. So I'm going to have Sarah be my hands while I be the narrator and cameraman. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and oil, uh, open our oil cap. So she's going to turn it. Which way? This way? Counterclockwise. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. She's going to okay, turn so it to the it. left. There you go. Pull it all the way out. Sometimes there's like a little groove on them, so you have to just like line it up so you can pull it out. Just to see where it um, comes out. There you go. And there's your cap. So then you'll just set that aside. And so that is going to relieve all of the um, air tension on it because there's an O-ring on it on your cap. See that gray O-ring? <laughs> this is an O-ring, so it's airtight. <laughs> so once you take the cap out, then that relieves the air pressure so that you can drain it easier. So now comes the crucial safety part. When you're jacking up a vehicle, you always A, want to make sure that it's on a frame rail, not on anything plastic or anything else that could move or break under pressure. So the first thing you wanna do is look underneath your vehicle and find something that is level and metal that you can put your jack on. Now a basic floor jack, for those that have never used one, Counterclockwise is to loosen it, and clockwise is to tighten it. 
once you have it tightened, you can go up like this, and then that gives you pressure on it to pick up whatever it is you're picking up. To release it, you just counterclockwise. So counterclockwise loosens it, relieves the pressure in the jack, and it will drop it. So whenever you're picking anything up, make sure it's nice and tight clockwise so that it doesn't go back down on you. And that's how you use a jack. Okay, so obviously oil changes are kind of a dirty thing to do because it's oil, right? And you're gonna get dirt on you no matter what. So make sure you wear something that you don't mind getting oil on or dirt. Don't worry, it comes off, but just make sure you keep that in mind too. So now I'm gonna show you basically how to find a good spot for your floor jack. Okie dokie. So this is underneath the front of the vehicle. Now your frame rail is this metal piece right here. This like flat metal piece that goes around and such. So um, with this, you're gonna wanna put the jack in the middle of the frame rail. So a good spot would be right down there. So we're gonna push this over that way. So right about right there. Make your make sure your jack is tight, and then have it go up. Make sure it's centered, and now your whole vehicle is going up. So now that I have tension, ah, yeet. So now that I have tension on it, I'm gonna go ahead and chalk the wheels before I lift it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and throw the wheel chocks under the rear wheels, one in the front, one on the back. If you don't have wheel chocks, you can use a board or something similar just so that it keeps the vehicle from rolling forward or backwards. Okay, so now that our wheel chocks are in, we can go ahead and raise it. Go ahead. Get rid of the beans, Munchie. What beans? Just beans. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> we're gonna bring this puppy up so so that we can fit underneath there easier to be able to get to the drain plug. Next safety thing, you definitely want to make sure that you have jack stands. Anytime you use a jack, you always wanna put jack stands underneath it in case your jack fails and you're underneath the vehicle, the jack stands will catch it and it won't squish you. So wheel chocks and jack stands are your two biggest safety things that you definitely wanna use if you enjoy living. Okay, so I've got these ones at Walmart. They're just two ton jack stands. Just, you don't need anything super crazy because we're not picking up semis. This is just a Buick, so a two ton will be just fine. How a jack stand works is you can pick up the top and it will have that much play in it and it'll go up higher. To release it, you just pull this lever up and it releases the tension on it. So you can adjust the height by just picking it up like this or by moving the bottom, whatever is easier for you. So now where do you put these? You wanna put your jack stands pretty much on the same level area on the frame. So I'll put this one right here and then I'll just pick it up to however high I need it. I'll probably go one a little bit lower. Probably. And I'll have Sarah do the other side to demonstrate on the other side. So she asked where the handle needs to go. And honestly, it really just doesn't matter. Um, preferably in a place where you can get to it. Right so, yep, yep, about right there. And we put it up four notches. Two, four? One, two, three. Is it four? One, two, three, four. Okay. Yep, now make sure it's even underneath so. and not gonna touch like that bolt or anything. I don't think it is. It looks too far away. Okay. Is it centered underneath there? It's hard for me to tell I'm on an angle. All right. Can, Can you see? Get, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. Okay. Probably about like right there. Looks about good. And then we're gonna slowly, keyword slowly, let down the jack onto the stands. So once your jack stands are set up, you're gonna slowly let down the jack. So it's under tension right now, so you just wanna very barely turn it counterclockwise to loosen it. It'll start to slowly come down, 
and just make sure that that frame rail goes onto your jack stands. Once it's on there, check both sides, make sure that they're both good, kind of wiggle it around some, and then you can let your jack all the way down and pull it out. Okay, so now that our Buick is on jack stands and it has the chalk blocks in the back, we are finally safe to go underneath it now. So the next thing you wanna do is find the oil pan drain plug. And to do that, it's a little bit more difficult if you're not familiar with engines, but it also is kind of self-explanatory also. So I'll go ahead and show you how I find the oil pan drain plugs and not the transmission drain plugs. Okay, so on most vehicles, your oil pan will be closest to the front of the vehicle. So right here, you see the little drain plug. I don't know if you can see it because my camera and my light sucks so bad. Okay, so here is the oil pan drain plug right there. And they give you a nice little access for the oil to drain out here. Anytime you're gonna loosen a bolt, it's to the left, so counterclockwise. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now this one is a 15 millimeter, so you can either use a wrench or a ratchet, whichever you prefer, doesn't matter. And before you loosen that, you wanna make sure you have your oil drip pan underneath it. So I'm gonna go grab the oil drip pan and the ratchet, and we're gonna take off that plug right there. Okay, so we have our oil drip pan underneath. This angle is from the front of the vehicle. I, at first, I was behind that tire. So I'm at the front now. And our plug is right here, facing the other way. Let me get my other hand in here. Maybe it is so hard to video and work at the same time. This is where the plug is, right here. So we're gonna take it off from this side over here, take the plug out and drain the oil from the pan into the drip pan. Okay, so now Sarah's gonna go ahead and take the drain plug out. We have the pan underneath. She's got her ratchet with a socket on there. So go ahead and take it out. Which way? It's already set up to go lefty loosey. This way? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Is it going left? Yes. All right, now take your ratchet off. I can't. Why can't you? Just wiggle it off. It won't come off. It will if you wiggle it off. I'm wiggling it. <laughs> wiggle, you will wiggle. Take, no, just wiggle the actual ratchet back and forth to take it off of the bolt and pull it back. So that it That's comes what off. I've been doing. Sarah, you're killing me. Sarah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it I'm off the plug. <laughs> there you go, Larry. <laughs> what? There you go. You're, yeah, wiggle. You're doing it. You're doing it. This way? Yeah, just get it off. <laughs> plug this yes slowly turn it counterclockwise which is left yep yep see how it's coming out mm -hmm. now once it, it squirt at me it's gonna shoot straight back and into that pan so when you get to the end of the threads then you can use your rag because right now there's no oil coming out mm -hmm. so just use your fingers yep turn it turn it turn it it's just a regular bolt when you feel that it's almost about to come out then just pull it straight out and just pull your arm away so that you can let the oil out. I was crying laughing. I have like tear dropping down <laughs> my too. face. Okay, so now I use the rag? If you, yeah, if you want. It doesn't matter. You don't have to. And then once you feel it coming out, just pull it out really quickly and down. Out and down? Out and down. And out. Yep. Ta-da! Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> you did it! Look at you! That's nasty looking. 
Well, it's used oil, Nemo. Mm -hmm. So Makes there you sense. go. And it's all over my hand. Nice. The rag. Now I can scooby on out, and then I'll show you how to take the oil filter off. Oh, gee. All right, so the next thing is we have these oil filter pliers right here. So there's like three different sizes, but we're going to have it on this middle piece right here. Well, she has it on a different setting, so we'll just go ahead and fix that to it's the middle setting. Move it right there. Okay, so that's the size that we're going to need. Right down here, hold up, let me show them where it is, is our oil filter. So you're going to look for like a circular canister like that right there. You can see where the plier marks are on it from when we put it on. But we're going to go ahead and take that off now. So I'm dirty. She's going to take these oil filter pliers and go down there and fish it out and take it off. Let me see if I can film from this side. It's really hard to see. On it is very hard to see in general. I'm trying to hold the light and film all at the same time. Am I bringing it up with me? Or what? You're, you're gonna turn it to the left. I am, I've been turning it to the oh, left. Okay, well keep turning it to the left then. Ma until it comes off. Why won't you focus? <laughs> Not Munchie, the camera. <laughs> I've been focused. <laughs> you little butt. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. Focus factor, Nemo. I have like no room to turn it, so whenever I turn it left, I always have to like re There we go. Clamp it. Yep. A little fart knocker. Yeah, it's kind of a tight fit, and I can't, I literally cannot get a better camera angle, so I'm sorry guys, but that's what we have to work with. Honestly, my camera Pin angle would be better if you okay. had it above my head. Yeah, okay. So do you think Please it's, don't drop me. do you think that it is hand tight now? Like, could you turn it with just your hand? Probably. All right, now go ahead and try to turn it the rest of the way off with just your hand. Reach down in there. Can you turn it? Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. So just turn it all the way off. And when it starts to come off, you're gonna want the, hand, the side that's closest to you to go towards the bottom so that the oil that's inside doesn't leak all over the ground. Okay, what? <laughs> okay. The side that's closest to you mm -hmm. is going to go towards the bottom. So when you pull it off. I'm pushing it down or I'm pulling it up? You're pulling it up. Okay. But the side that's closest to you needs to be the bottom so that it doesn't leak all the oil out. Mm -hmm. Because the side that you're twisting off is open. Okay? I'm still lost. Oh, my land. <laughs> Dude. I'm turning it in a circle. What side are you talking about? Okay, when you turn this, where the heck is it? I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, it's over here. When you take this off, this side, do you see my finger? Barely. This. This. There you go. This one, when you take it off, grab it from the top and pull up so that this side is pointed down so that you don't empty out all of the oil that is inside of this. Oh. Like a glass of water. Okay. Okay? Gosh. So the top is the top of the glass. The bottom is the bottom of the glass. You want the bottom on the bottom and the top on the top so the water doesn't spill out. Okay? What happens if it spills out? It's going to make a mess. Okay. <laughs> and I don't want to clean it. <laughs> so. I hate how warm it is. It's so weird. Oh, it's just lovely. It's really fun when it's just comes off the highway after running for a day and a half straight and it's How like boiling it's hot. At? When you feel like it's about to come off. Cause I don't want to drop it. Oh, there we go. Like that? Yep. Now bring it up. Careful. Don't drop the hacking thing. Get there out. There you go. It. See how it's open like that? Okay. So that's why you didn't want to dump it, right? Yeah. Cause there's oil inside of there. Yeah. <sighs> that was <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs> Your first oil change, Munchie. Oh, well, that's it? That's well, you got to put all the stuff back in it. You're only halfway done. That sucks. <laughs> Barely. Okay. okay, so now Sarah is going to put the drain plug back in. She's got a ratchet to be able to tighten it down. But first you want to put it in as far as you can by hand.
And then Is she's, my arm in the oil or no? I don't know. I'm not looking at your arm. Okay. And then you're going to look at your ratchet. And you see on the back of the ratchet where it says on and off? Hold on. I got to turn more. See on the back of the ratchet where it says on and off? Mm-hmm. Does it say on? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now you can go ahead and put the ratchet on there. Oh my gosh. Why do I struggle so much with this? Okay. All right. Now tighten it down. Brick. Once you get it on the bolt, <laughs> that would be good. You just love me. I do love you so much. Oh my gosh. Get it on there and then tighten it down. Get it on there good before you turn it. Is it on there good? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it on there at all? Y yes. Okay, turn it. I can't. All anymore. right, that means you're tight. Ta da! The plug is in. Is it? I would hope so. <laughs> I'll check it. All right, wheel out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. See? See? Doesn't go no tight no more. <laughs> Put your hand on the end of the ratchet so you have more leverage. Oh, on the end? Yeah. So yeah, you have more I leverage to turn it. Oil. As long uh, as it's tightened okay. down a little. It doesn't have to be like torqued to 700 foot pounds. You don't even know what that means, do you? No. I didn't think so. Okay. Close enough. <laughs> Let me see it. Yeah. I just want to double check it. Ooh, nice and oily. Delicious. I shall be. All right, I'll check it. Okay, so now she's going to put the new filter on. Keep in mind, my dad went and got the filter and the oil, so it's not of my choice. But he just picked up an oil filter and some oil. Um, 5W30 is what it takes. So he got 5W30. Says it right here on the bottom. That's the type of oil that you need. And you can search for what filter number you need. I mean, I'm sure he got all of this at Walmart. If you go to AutoZone, you could ask them too. But there's usually either like a book there or like a little tablet thing. You can search by your make, model, and year, and it'll tell you the number. And so this is the part number right here at the bottom, this PH70575. That is the part number for the oil filter. And then you can just get any brand of oil as long as it's 5W30 or whatever your vehicle takes, whether it be 5W20, 0W, whatever. Just make sure you get what your vehicle takes. So next, she put the plug back in the pan and now we're gonna put the oil filter back on before we add any oil. Actually a little bit more difficult, especially on this make and model because the filter area goes way down in there. So I'm gonna actually do that part. But first, you always wanna make sure that you put fresh oil on your O-ring before you mount it anywhere. So I just opened up one of these new oil quartz. I'm just going to dip my finger in a little bit and then put some fresh oil along this o-ring to pre-moisturize it I guess you could say. Because just like your face, your oil filter o-ring needs moisturizer too. <laughs> Lubrication. Okay, so I'm gonna put that so that I don't accidentally dump it everywhere. And in other oil filter applications where they are vertical instead of horizontal, I'll actually pre-fill the oil filter, but because this one is a vertical application, if I put oil in this, trying to install it this way, all the oil will dump out. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm not gonna pre-fill this one. But if this one was, say, on a truck or any other vehicle that the oil filter gets screwed in from the bottom, like that. That'd be so much easier. Then I would pre-fill it and it'd have oil already in it. But because of this Buick, I can't do that. And there's acorns just falling on my roof of my shop. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in here. I'm gonna climb all the way over here so I can get to it. Feed my arm way down yonder. Find the side of the thing that it screws onto. Okay, so I had to switch because I can't do anything with my left hand. So we got it started right here. I'm just hand tightening it down with my hand. And then I'll just give her, actually, 
I think right there should be good. You don't need to put a ton of pressure on it. I feel like the oil lube guys always want to just tighten the living crap out of everything and it is not needed. You don't need it to be torqued to like 75 foot pounds, bro. Like calm down. So hand tight and then a little bit past is about perfect for your plug and for your oil filter. It doesn't need to be super wrenched really hard down on. Okay, so now that we have our oil plug in and we have our new oil filter on, we can go ahead and fill it with oil. Now, if you, if you remember from the beginning of the video, we took our cap off. So that is where you're going to be putting the new oil in. So if you want to show them right here. So that is where your new oil is going to go in at. So I'm going to go grab a funnel because I don't want to have to clean up more of a mess. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, so now another little trick too is on your oil gallon thing, if it comes with one of these little safety seal thingamajiggies, I only take half of it off so that it helps from having a lot of other fluid just pouring out really super fast. So I'll just take some of it off, put it to the side, and now it's ready to be able to pour. So another thing with these jugs is everyone likes to pour it this way. But these bigger ones are actually designed to pour from the side, so it's easier to control. Huh. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick that I know first, and then I'll have Sarah take care of the rest of it. So I actually hold my hand in the little handle doodad like this. Let me try to get in here. And then <clears throat> I just slowly tip it to where I have a steady stream coming out. And then I'll adjust it depending on where I need to pour. <coughs> Salud. Thank you. So then you're just gonna add your oil. And a lot of people always ask, so how much oil do I need to use? Now, the best answer for that is honestly, I Google it. It's like the easiest way to find out how much oil you need to get. So you just put in your make and model and Google, type in how many quarts of oil does a 2015 Buick Enclave take? And then I can search for the answer on there. So now that I'm almost done with here, I'll go ahead and let Sarah finish that one. So go ahead. Now that there's not so much oil to, to spill all over the place. Yep. There you go. Wonderful. Now it's sponsored by Castrol. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Just kidding. Yet. <laughs> do I do the rest of it? Yep, go ahead and put the rest of that in there. Okay. Drip, 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 drip. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna put oh, our no. old oil that we drained from the oil pan into this container and recycle the container. Okie dokie. Okay. All right, so now we have that in there. We're gonna check our dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Dingus. <laughs> we're gonna check the dipstick to make sure we have enough oil in there or if we need to add any, okay? Mm -hmm. So where's your dipstick? It's Can you take a guess? Uh, I'll give you a hint, it's yellow. Is it this little keyhole thingy? Yep. That's your dipstick. So go grab a rag. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and take the dipstick out. Ew. Yep, you're just How gonna, long is it? Jeez. You're just gonna pull it all the way out. It's still going. Here's your rag. And you're just gonna wipe off the dipstick. There you go. Lovely, lovely. So now, <laughs> all right, we're not, this is not playtime, Nemo. Not, I tell you, I tell you. This is learning time. I can't get the dang burn thing to focus. But anyway, so you see these little lines on your dipstick right here? Mm -hmm. Focus camera, for the love of Pete. All right, hold this right here so I can focus the dang burn camera. Okay, see the little lines on the dipstick. Why, okay, there we go. See the lines? Mm -hmm. So here's like your add or low line, or sorry, I'm upside down. This is your add or low line, okay? Mm -hmm. These are your levels. So you want to fill it to 
this line. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Sometimes they'll even have them written on here, depending on the make and model. But this one just has lines. So you're going to go to this top line. This one? Or this one? This one. Okay. That one right there. So put it back in there. Now, once you put fresh oil in, you have to actually start it first. Before yeah. All the you, way in? Yep, all the way in. Now, we're going to go ahead and start it. So before we start it, we need all the stuff Don't I have to off. put the cap back on? You can put the cap back on if you feel safer too. Does it have to be? doesn't necessarily need to be. So before we start it, we want to make sure we have all the stuff off of it that wouldn't be by the fan or stuff like that. So we're just going to take some stuff away from moving parts. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's why you don't leave Sorry. stuff on the ground to kill yourself on. <laughs> Press the brake in. Brake in. Turn the key. Okay. You can let your foot off the brake. And then with here, I'll show you how to reset. See how you have this little change in an engine oil soon? Mm -hmm. So to reset that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to reset the oil change light. So you're gonna turn your key past the AC to the next line, but don't start it just to where it says like this little line or, or run. So, I mean, the hood's open right now, so it says that, but it says change engine oil soon. So to make sure that you reset that, you're gonna come down here. You're gonna just, this is like a button, but you don't really have to like press it that far. So just push it until your oil one pops up, which is right there. And then you're gonna go ahead and take this check mark and you're just gonna hold it down until it resets. So the first button was this one with the little vehicle with an eye. Press that one until your oil part comes back up. Once it pops up, you're gonna hold down this little check mark until it says 100. And then that's it. Okay, we had it started and running, so she went ahead and took the oil dipstick tube out. We get we got it cleaned off with the little rag. We're gonna go ahead and put it back in. Push it all the way down. And now you can go ahead and pull it back out. And check your oil level. Which I can't get to focus on this camera to save my life. Hold that. Come on, camera. Oh, for the love of Pete. Can you see it now? I don't know. This camera sucks. I'm a much better mechanic than I am a cameraman. Okay, there we go. Alright, so you see how there's not really much of any oil on this? There's no oil on it yet. So that means we still need to add. So go ahead and take your cap out once you put your no, dipstick back in now with these shaped bottles everyone always pours it like this but you actually want to pour it like this wow. I know everyone does it backwards Incorrectly. and I don't I don't know why I, ah, that's it's good on the floor. <laughs> at least it's on the floor you've just experienced your first heart attack I'll grab your funnel put it in the thingamajiggy Here's your thing. And you said this way? Like yep. This you're way? Gonna, yep. You're going to pour this bottom down. Interesting. Yes. And you're going to go ahead and put that whole quart in. Okay. This video is going to be 400 hours long. <laughs> I'm sorry. I may have to do bloopers too. We pl please do. There probably be so many. <laughs> All right, now put your little cap back on. Oh, I have to go find it first. No, this cap. Oh, this cap. We'll find that in a second. Put that back on. Pull your dipstick out. Check it for oil.
which I can't really. Okay, I think I kind of see a little bit right here. All right, so we're at the bottom line right now. So we're gonna have to put more. Okay, for whatever reason, the dipstick is just not ever going to focus on my camera. So very sorry about that, but I showed you the line. So there's that. And then um, we're just cleaning up everything we used with the funnel and stuff. Should I put the cap back in there? Okay, so now we have our cap back in there like that. I put it in by myself. Oh, good. And now we're gonna have to lower the vehicle off of the jack stands. Do you remember how to do that? We'll work on that. <laughs> Take my light down and close the hood. Grab the hood. The, the, the hood, the whole entire hood, yep. Down, latch it. Woo! Ding dong. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our jack stands out with the jack. And then we can back it out of the shop and clean up our mess. Okay, so now she's going to well, see. You, can you see it? See where the cross member is for the frame? I can see. All right. Wait, do I have to go back for that? Or are we there? How does it look? It looks wonderful. I'll go ahead and tighten it down to the right so that it, see how it's not going up. It's because it's not tightened. So you got to turn it to the right to where it's tightened. Okay. Now see how it goes up. All right. Keep going up. Make sure it's flat. You got to come in some. Okay. Right there. Okay. No. Go back some. Back some. Mhm. Mm right there. Okay. No. Back some. Right there. Go up. Wonderful. Yep. And then you're just going to keep going up until you let the weight off of your jack stand so that you can get them out. So keep going because your passenger side isn't off yet. Keep going. There you go. All right. Now you're off. Uh -huh. Yep. So I'm going to show you how to take them out. Just like these little levers. Uh -huh. Pull them up. Uh -huh. That drops down. Take them out. So go ahead and do the other side. Yep. Wait, well, so it goes up? Yep, down? push the lever up. up. Push the lever, crunk! <laughs> <laughs> Munchy, you're killing me, Smunch. Just Is push, yes, yes, mm -hmm. all the way up, push it, yes. Mm -hmm. Cool though. Oh my land. Okay. <laughs> Alright, now slowly let your jack down. So you're gonna loosen it. Instead of tighten it. Okay, that's scary. <laughs> Let it out. Pull it out. And you're done. Take the take the blocks out from the tires. I've never been so scared for my life. It didn't die. No, that's good. Take the blocks out. All right, now you can back the car out and then your oil change is complete. Yay! So this was a little bit of a how-to slash teaching video also. If you have any questions in the comments, be feel free to leave them there and I'll be sure to address them there. If you need any explanations or better um, videos, just message me too on Instagram and I can try to give you clips or stuff like that that are easier to see. It's really hard on the Buicks because engineers just love it. But there's also other videos on there for my 2015 Camaro that I did an oil change on as well as a 2020 Jeep Gladiator. So you can find those here on my channel as well. So if you want to see different makes and models be worked on you can check those out as well. So, yes. And then I think in the next video, I'll probably do like a uh, tire changing type video, how to jumpstart a car type video, just add and on things. And if there's anything else that you wanna see, just holler. And I'll do a how-to video on that as well. So 